Hey guys, I'm back. It is Thursday, January 28th, 2021. All right, so I'm here to do um, the series on PC specs and how it relates to your music production as far as power and what you need to get what you need to get done done so this is for people who really don't know much about computers they do music production or they're trying to get into music production and you want to know what to get or you're doing music production and you want to upgrade but you really don't know how these specs affect uh what you're trying to do so hopefully this gives you some insight this is the second time i'm trying to do the stream i just tried it and for some reason after 15 minutes a couple of my um streaming outlets just stopped streaming so bear with me guys as i try to troubleshoot and figure out what's going on but um in the meantime i'll just talk about my day it, it's been a good day it's been a busy day as usual and um just trying to get through it right <laughs> i didn't um i wasn't prepared to do this video today that wasn't my goal when i woke up this morning but i was like hey <laughs> it's time to do this video it's overdue just give me a second guys i'm just trying to check some things out So um, today I'm going to be doing it in um, in parts. So today we're going to be dealing with the CPU. I think next time we're going to be dealing with RAM and so on and so forth. It's probably about four to five parts to the series. So this is part one. So let's jump right into it. So uh, today we're dealing with the CPU. So the questions we have, I got to stop doing that. How do I do that? <laughs> Let's stop that. Give me a second, guys. Uh, where am I? Yeah. So it's funny because with the CPU, um, and and computer specs and all that stuff the industry has changed but it hasn't really changed it's weird to say um cpus are pretty much they still operate the same there's no like huge leap in what they're doing or how they're doing it they're just getting a little bit more efficient there's a, a balance of efficiency level with speed versus how hot it gets and how quickly it can burn out due to it operating at um these high processing speeds of course it generates more heat and you have things like um what is that thing called um <laughs> nano transistors there's another one with a funny name i, I can't remember right now but there's all these different things that they are, you know, considering when they're doing it, when they're developing the new CPUs or whatever. But there hasn't been any huge leaps. It's just that we're adding more cores and we're able to get them a little bit faster because um, the technology is just getting <laughs> tinier and tinier. So uh, let's get back to the PowerPoint. So we're going to be asking, what is a CPU? Why is it important, how it works, and what to look for when it's time to purchase one or purchase a, compu purchase a computer that, um, you know, you want to know what CPU is in it. So what is a CPU? The CPU is the brain of the PC, right? And then, like, why is it important? Because it's the brain of the C of the PC. So when you um when you do something as simple as type, you're sending commands to the PC, and you're telling the command to the PC, "Hey, I want to see these letters." 
So the CPU is receiving those commands, processing the commands, and completing the task and giving you back results, right? So uh, the next thing we have here is um, how does it work? So I just explained how it works. It receives commands and then it gives you results, therefore completing its tasks. So we have clock speeds. What are clock speeds? So if you go to, well, let's do this first. This right here, <laughs> this is not a PC. Uh, sorry, this is not a CPU. I talk to people sometimes and they'd be like, oh, here's my CPU right here. This is not a CPU. Not a CPU. Uh, this is what your CPU is. Your CPU is, this is a case, I should say. This is a tower or your case. It holds all the components that make up the PC. So like your fans, your power supply, your motherboard is in there. Of course, your CPU is in there, graphics card, things of that nature. This is what houses all the parts, the guts of the PC. Now, this is what a PC looks like. Sorry, this is what the CPU looks like. And um, it's very small considering what it does. So here's an image giving you some scale of how small it is. And it goes on the motherboard in this area where you see it seated, uh, that's called the CPU socket. And different CPUs have different socket types. So it's keyed where if it's not meant for that socket, it will not fit there, right? So. Right along. So now we come to the question of cores what is a core you might see this somewhere where they talk about your cpu cores so the core best way to kind of explain the core is i mean the, the quick explanation is the core is sub processors within the processor that allows for multitasking and um when we talk about, let's talk about clock speed real quick. So clock speed, if you notice right here on this image, it says 3.5 GHz, which is 3.5 gigahertz. The clock speed is basically how fast your CPU executes commands. The higher the clock speed, the faster your CPU will be processing commands. So it'll make your CPU faster. So, um, when we talk about cores now and clock speed, the clock speed that you see on your CPU pertains to each core. So if it's a 3.5 gigahertz CPU, each core is operating at that speed. So what the core is, the core is a sub processor within the processor. So the image that we're looking at is what it looks like inside the CPU. So if you ripped the cover off of this, that's what it looks like under there. So this has eight cores. So these eight cores can handle the tasks and process them. And because you have eight cores, you can have potentially eight different things going on or even more than that. So now we're, we, that moves us down to multi-threading. So what is multi-threading? Multi-threading allows for more intelligent and more efficient multitasking. So let me try and explain this with an analogy. So let's say this image that you're looking at right here, the whole entire box is uh, an office building, office space, right? And then where each core is, is an office. And each core is a worker. So the office space, the actual entire space represents the CPU. The cores would represent workers, the workers. And the workers get tasks. Now the building itself, the office itself, the company is receiving a bunch of tasks that they do daily and then they send it out. That's what they do. That's what they offer as a service, right? So that would be the workload. So that's the myriad of tasks that they receive and complete every day. 
That's the workload. Once the workload comes in, the office is not doing it because the office is a building. But you have the cores, which are the eight workers that are receiving the tasks, and then they're the ones completing the tasks and sending them out. So that's basically what the cores are. Now, what multi-threading is, it's how many channels that are available for each core so that they can receive and send out. So they receive tasks and they can send them out over these channels. And that's what multi-threading is. So most of the modern CPUs nowadays, they have um, multi-core threading, which most times it's two per core. So what happens is you end up with what they call logical cores or virtual cores. What virtual cores are is what they're only seen by software. So it's a virtual thing. So only the software can see it, recognize it. So your OS recognizes it and um, any application that supports it, like your DAW, if your DAW supports multi-threading, be, it'll be able to see it. So it'll see instead of the eight cores here, it'll actually see 16 cores. So it just allows for more, like I said, efficient and intelligent multitasking. And it adds to you just having a better processor. So multi-threading is good. Multiple cores, definitely good. So now we got some questions here. And that is, um, what's more important? Is it more important to have um, a high clock speed or is it more important to have uh, more cores is your core count more important more important for music production but what I, what I would say is that um, both are important they're just as important they, they serve different purposes but they're just as important so with the clock speed this will help you with overall performance to reduce lag um, in some aspect right and also it will also help with the stability of just the whole function of the computer. So how it interacts with the OS and how it interacts with your DAW, because that's what we're really talking about, your DAW and your fancy high-powered plugins. So it will definitely help for you to have a high clock speed. It also helps with heavy processing effects, like certain effects are very CPU intensive. Reverb can be one of them, depending on the type of reverb you have. And we kind of take it for granted the fact that reverb is a very intense effect and it's not real. Like when we're hearing it on in our DAW, it's not real because you're not using a physical reverb device or you're not using a reverb room which reverb is a natural thing that happens so we tend to take it for granted sometimes that reverb is not real and when we put it on the snare we just expect it to work and sound great and we're not taking into consideration that the CPU is um, along with the software is using algorithms to say well based on the the plugin and the settings that you dialed into this plugin for this reverb, this is what the reverb is gonna sound on the snare every time the snare is being triggered and fed into the reverb. This is what we're doing. This is what it sounds like. It's not real, it's virtual. It's just giving you a, ref a real time reference of what it sounds like. So just think about that with all the different processes that you're doing in your DAW. You're setting levels, different volume levels. That's not what the volume level is when you pull it down or turn it up. The volume level is just one fixed level that the audio file or the plugin is giving. But now you're turning that down and you're panning it. So the computer's like, okay, it's over here at this volume with reverb on it. Then you're EQing and you're filtering. And it's like, okay, based on what's going on, this is what this is supposed to sound like with these EQ settings and then now you're compressing and you're side chaining and you got your sends and you're just routing everything everywhere. The CPU has to process all that and say, hey, okay, this is what this sounds like in real time. And we kind of take that for granted that the CPU is doing all this work 
to let you hear something that's not real yet. It's not real until you render out something um, to a WAV file, then it gives you the rendered representation of what you were doing. So with the CPU, along with RAM, which we'll talk about in the next video, it's giving you real-time reference of what your mix and your effect changes and choices actually sounds like. So uh, you want to make sure that you have uh, a decent processor that can handle that. So stability is very important. And um, when you're dealing with even synths, a lot of synths are very complicated. They have multiple oscillators making three different sounds. And then there's uh, white noise being generated, which most times that's a sample, but still it's all happening in one thing. And then you start using LFOs to modulate and drive different parameters. So things are actively happening and changing. Then you have certain things that are symbiotically related where you have a filter that's activated by the volume of this oscillator. So only when it triggers is when the filter starts sweeping and there's more things constantly changing and happening in real time with the synth, not to mention the synths usually have like an effect rack, reverb, delay, phasers, uh, distortion, EQs, filters, all this stuff. And it's all in one plugin, all in one synth. That's a lot of processing for the CPU. CPU is still processing stuff dealing with the OS and all the processes going on in the background with that and all the stuff you got going on in the DAW, the MIDI files, the, all the different audio files that you have going on or your complex routing. So you want to make sure that you have a very, very stable pro processor. So that's where definitely the speed is important. So. The recommendation, I think, is at least two gigs, a two gigahertz processor with the clock speed. But I would say definitely get higher if you can go three and above if you want something that's going to perform and not give you hitches and issues. So uh, when it comes to now the core count, the core count will help, of course, with multitasking. You definitely want something with multi threading support because now that's gonna give you even more stability and efficiency with um, your processors, functions, and um, multitasking. Um, and understand that your DAW is just built up of a lot of uh, little modules, little programs within the program, plus then you're installing more programs within that programs which we call plugins or VST plugins. Um, so there are multiple things happening. So you wanna facilitate that with a CPU that can handle multiple tasks effectively, efficiently, consistently. So that's pretty much it uh, for the CPU video. Let me just show you this real quick. <laughs> This is a CPU that I saw online and it has 20 cores. Can anybody guess what the price was? There it is. It's $3,800, $3,875.29 $3, for a 20 core CPU, CPU. And the clock speed is not even that fast. It's 2.2 gigahertz. Uh, but yeah, it can get really expensive. So, you know, uh, govern yourself accordingly when it's time to, uh, get a CPU. If you're building your rig or if you're just buying or doing like an online configurator where you have a baseline, uh, package, uh, baseline, what they call, what do they call those things? Bare bone kit. A baseline bare bone kit that you're now adding certain things like you get to choose your CPU, how much RAM and all that stuff. Bear this in mind, um, how many cores you want, how many cores you need based on what your workload is or going to be. You want to try to get stuff that's a little bit future proof. 
so that you know a year later your computer is not useless and just remember the more powerful processors get it pushes the developers of the software to do more with the software and um a lot of the stuff they already have is just that they're lacking the cpu power on the average user's computer so once the cpus get to a certain processing level they're just now testing and releasing these new functionalities something like mpe support mpe is very cpu intensive if you know what mpe is it's it's crazy when you think about what mpe is and that the daw is doing that that's a lot of intense processing so you want to make sure that you stay up to date and try to get the best thing based on your budget if you're trying to stay competitive and utilize a lot of the cutting edge features that are out there in your DAW and in your software, in your, your plugins and stuff like that, um, along with the hardware. So that's pretty much it, guys. Hopefully that was helpful. Um, I'm going to come back with part two. I don't know when. It'll definitely be by next week. It could be over the weekend. Doesn't matter. Just keep checking. <laughs> but uh, that's it. Tomorrow is Friday. I'll be doing um, free app Friday. So uh, check in for that. But that's it. Thanks for watching. And as always, you'll see me in the next video.